I'm going to give a brief introduction on gRPC, uh, which stands for Google Remote Procedure Call because it was developed by Google. So what is gRPC? It's basically a high performance universal RPC framework. So uh, what is an RPC? It stands for Remote Procedure Call. Uh, an example is that if, uh, let's say there is a client process running and there is a server process running. So the server is always waiting for a request and the client can give certain remote procedures parameters which the server's server is uh, expecting. Then once the uh, server receives, the call procedure begins when the client sends a request message to the server then the server receives the message, does some processing, then sends a reply. And during this time, the client is waiting. And once the client gets the reply, it resumes its process. This is overall introduction of how an RPC works. And using gRPC, it, be, it is much easier for a client to call a server process. So it will be as simple as just calling a function as if it already exists in the client itself. But actually that function would be executed in the server. And gRPC includes an API policy which is applied on top of protocol buffers. Now what are the advantages of gRPC? So in the gRPC, the communication is based on HTTP2 uh, protocol and it is usually advantageous, advantageous because HTTP2 has uh, compression and streaming involved. So streaming means you don't have to send a huge um, amount of data at a time. You can send multiple chunks of it at a time. And Compression makes things faster, basically. So these two have a combined effect of low latency, which means the websites will be faster. And gRPC has a well-defined schema for via protocol buffers 3. So you can easily define what uh, a server does uh, by writing, writing the schema on top of protocol buffers. So, and this schema will be placed at one place and anyone who looks at it can know what this server is capable of doing just by looking at that schema and it makes things much easier to understand what to expect from the server. I'll go into more details later and it supports automatic client code generation for 10 different languages. The server can be written in Go for example and the client can be written in C++. So it's, uh, it doesn't depend on language specifically, uh, which makes it much easier to deal with. You don't have to restrict, you don't have to be restricted to one particular language all the time. It supports bi-directional streaming, which means the server can uh, stream as well as the client can send requests uh, through a stream. Uh, it's important, for example, in case, uh, let's say you are streaming a video and the server is streaming parts of video as the time progresses rather than you know sending the entire video and throughout that time client is waiting and only until only after getting the whole video it can play it no instead of that it can stream and as it streams the client can continue to uh, show the video for example then there is timeout based killing of requests which is very efficient so in case the client has requested uh, something and for some reason the server, uh, something happened in the server and it, there is some mix functioning happening in the server. So it's better to kill the request if we know for sure that this request is not going to uh, end up in an expected result. So it's better if we kill it and do another request rather than continue for the whole request to go through. And the, because we can uh, kill it based on the timeout, which means the, let's say the client should not wait for more than 10 seconds before, then the server will be able to kill the request once 10 seconds is passed. And so that the client can make 
another fresh request and that is uh, out of the box support for metrics logging and tracing so metrics is basically you would need to know things like how long does a typical request takes and how long does a typical response time takes how long does it take to load a website how many times the website is loaded so these are examples of metrics <coughs> it's easy to implement metrics uh, in grpc and there is support for logging as well so you would need to know the current status of your system through logs which means uh, let's say if your server got a request it can log okay got a request then it can probably log uh, starting the computation then once it is finished it can log okay so that you have a better understanding of uh, if the process has been going on as you expect or not then comes tracing it has inbuilt support for tracing so tracing helps us know the overall flow of execution of a program so in case your system crashes you can look at the traces and see uh, at which function call your program stopped working for example this is this makes things much easier to debug so these are the overall advantages of using grpc connections for uh, for your system overall it makes things much faster now what are the drawbacks for now there are a couple of drawbacks for now one is there's no support for browser directly so if your backend is running using um, a grpc connection if you want to uh, connect your backend to let's say your website you'll have to use a, a http call then there is no uh, support for load balancing as of now 